First degree atrioventricular block is identified on the ECG by a prolonged PR interval. The term AV block, which implies failure of conduction, is actually a misnomer. The pulse is still conducted, but with an increase in the amount of delay. As the name implies, this excessive delay usually occurs at the level of the AV node. The PR interval starts at the beginning of the P wave and ends at the onset of the QRS complex. Note that the PR interval includes the P wave and the PR segment. Do not confuse the PR interval with the PR segment, which is the isoelectric line that occurs in between the P wave and the QRS complex. The ECG on the top right depicts a normal PR interval. To determine its duration, we simply count the squares from the beginning of the P wave to the start of the QRS complex. The duration of one little square is 0.04 seconds, or if you prefer, 40 milliseconds. The duration of one big square is 0.2 seconds, or alternatively, 200 milliseconds. A normal PR interval is between 0.08 and 0.2 seconds. Any duration exceeding 0.2 seconds is considered prolonged. And in some cases, the PR interval may extend even beyond one full second. With such extremely long PR intervals, the P waves can become obscured or hidden by the T waves. Now let's count the number of small squares within the PR interval in the normal ECG at the top right corner of the screen. There are about four little squares, that equates to 0.16 seconds, which is well within the normal limits. Now let's look at the image below. The entire PR interval fits within one big square, so even without calculating it, we already know that it's less than 0.2 seconds, and thus it's not prolonged. Now let's go back to the ECG with first degree AV block on the top left corner of the screen. We can see that approximately 6.5 little squares fit within the PR interval. This equates to 0.26 seconds, which is prolonged. Now in this ECG on the bottom left, the prolongation is less clearly evident. But on close inspection, we can see that the PR interval is indeed longer than one large box. Thus, it is greater than 0.2 seconds in duration. Here's another example of first degree AV block. The PR interval is about 8.5 little squares in duration, which equates to 0.34 seconds. And in this new ECG below, the PR interval is about 7.5 little squares in duration, which equates to 0.3 seconds. Now let's briefly take a look at this entire ECG. What I would like to note here is that oftentimes there will be other coinciding findings, and the start of the P wave may be more difficult to discern. In this ECG, the P wave in the limb leads is a bit more flattened than in the precordial leads. Now it is clearly visible in V3. In addition to the PR interval prolongation, there are also features suggestive of a right bundle branch block. Note the widened QRS complex with a bunny ear pattern in V1. And there's also a left anterior hemi block. Note the left axis deviation and an initial R wave followed by a deep S wave in lead 3. I will discuss these other findings in subsequent lectures, but I'd like to briefly mention that the presence of these additional conduction abnormalities suggests that the defect resulting in PR prolongation may be located somewhere below the level of the AV node. Now there are a few more features of first degree AV block which are worth paying attention to. While the PR interval is prolonged, it does not vary from beat to beat. Lengthening of successive PR intervals followed by a drop beat would be indicative of type 1 second degree AV block. The heart rate is dependent on the underlying sinus rhythm and is not usually affected if first degree heart block is the only abnormality present. The RR intervals are consistent and the atrioventricular rates are equal. First degree AV block does not result in drop beats. Every P wave is followed by QRS complex, that is the AV conduction ratio is 1 to 1. If there are P waves that are not followed by QRS complex, then you should consider the possibility of a higher grade block or another abnormality. Type 1 second degree AV block, also termed Mobitz Swan or Weckenbach, is characterized by progressive lengthening of successive PR intervals until an atrial impulse fails to conduct to the ventricles. The lack of conduction to the ventricles results in a pause in the rhythm and the absence of a QRS complex on the ECG. Notice how the baseline PR interval, that is, the first PR interval following a non-conducted P wave, lengthens from beat to beat until a beat is dropped. Although it is obvious in this example, this finding can actually be quite subtle. In less conspicuous cases, it can help to compare the baseline PR interval, which is the shortest, with the PR interval preceding the non-conducted P wave, which is typically the largest. 
It is important to note that although the baseline PR interval is usually normal in duration, it can be prolonged if there is coexisting first degree heart block. Another finding typical of Mobitz 1, which is hard to appreciate in this illustration, is an RR interval that progressively shortens. The RR interval is the longest following a drop beat and then shortens with successive beats until an atrial impulse fails to conduct to the ventricles. The ratio of atrial impulses that are conducted to the ventricles is usually between 3 to 2 and 7 to 6. However, this ratio can vary between cycles. Nonetheless, each group begins and ends with a P wave. In this example, the atrial to ventricular conduction ratio is 4 to 3. That is, for every 4 P waves, there are 3 QRS complexes. Type 2 second degree AV block is characterized by constant PR intervals and an intermittent failure of the atrial impulse to conduct to the ventricles. Unlike in Mobitz 1, the PR intervals are consistent between all conducted beats. As well, the R intervals are constant and the rhythm is regular until a beat is dropped. This can be referred to as a pattern irregularity. As in Mobitz 1, the ratio of atrial impulses that are conducted to the ventricles is usually between 3 to 2 and 7 to 6. Again, this ratio can vary between cycles. With 2 to 1 AV block, there is only one PR interval within a grouping. The PR intervals between the groups, however, are constant as are the RR intervals unless the degree of block is variable. When the degree of AV block is greater than 2 to 1, the dysrhythmia is referred to as high-grade or advanced AV block. High-grade AV block can be confused with third-degree AV block, however conducted P waves will have a consistent PR interval. In this ECG, we are going to focus on lead 2 where the P waves are best visualized. The PR intervals are gradually increasing until a P wave fails to conduct and results in a dropped beat. This pattern is characteristic of Mobitz 1. Note that within each cycle there are 5 P waves and 4 QRS complexes, hence the AV conduction ratio is 5 to 4. Now let's take a look at this second ECG. Again, we will focus on lead 2. The PR intervals are constant, but P waves eventually fail to conduct. At the beginning of the tracing, there are groups of beats with an AV conduction ratio of 3 to 2, that is, there are 3 P waves for every 2 QRS complexes, but near the end of the tracing, the AV conduction ratio drops to 2 to 1. Also note the wide QRS complexes, which in this case is due to right bundle branch block. In Mobitz 2, the QRS complexes are often greater than 0.1 seconds in duration due to a commonly infranodal location of the block. With complete heart block, electrical impulses from the atria do not reach the ventricles. Instead, the atria and ventricles are controlled by independent pacemakers. This results in asynchronous activation of the upper and lower chambers of the heart. This is reflected on the ECG as atrioventricular dissociation, in which the P waves and QRS complexes occur completely independently of one another. Now let's take a closer look at this ECG. These are the P waves, and they are occurring at a regular rate, at approximately 115 beats per minute. The HL rate is based on the underlying rhythm, and in this case, the H are under control of the sinus node. Note not that all of the P waves are easy to identify. This P wave is abutted to the QRS complex, while this P wave has resulted in a distorted T wave. Sometimes, the P wave will not be visible at all because it is completely buried within a QRS complex. It is also important to note that the atrial rate can be irregular, such as when a patient with complete heart block has atrial fibrillation. Now let's take a look at the QRS complexes. They are also occurring at a regular rate of about 27 beats per minute. Note how the QRS complexes are occurring at regular intervals with no relation to the P waves whatsoever. The P waves are simply not conducting to the ventricles and thus do not initiate any QRS complexes. The QRS complexes that emerge are due to an escape rhythm which is slower than the sinus rate. This is important because AV dissociation by itself is not diagnostic of complete heart block. For example, it can also occur in ventricular tachycardia. So essentially, the CCG has two regular rhythms. The P waves are just marching along minding their own business, and the QRS complexes pop up when they can no longer wait for an electrical impulse to come through. There is no PR interval, just a random space between asynchronous P waves and QRS complexes. In this rhythm strip, you may have noticed that the QRS complex is rather narrow. Well, the morphology of the QRS complexes and the ventricular rate depends on the location of the escape pacemaker. When the block occurs at the level of the AV node and the escape pacemaker is in the AV junction, then a junctional escape rhythm appears with a narrow QRS complex 
and a rate usually between 40 to 60 beats per minute. When the block occurs below the level of the AV node and the escape pacemakers in the ventricles, then a ventricular escape rhythm appears. The QRS complex is wide, and the rate is usually between 20 to 40 beats per minute or less. Clinically, patients with a ventricular escape rhythm are usually more compromised.